Hello, welcome to my studio and welcome to another edition of Art Discussion with me, Adelaide Damoa. I'm an artist and I really enjoy speaking to other artists to find out what makes them tick and the kind of strategies they put in place in order to ensure that they survive and sometimes even thrive in the art world. I like to package that information into video format and share it with you in the hope that I'm able to somehow promote the artist on my baby channel and while at the same time providing some inspiration for you who are watching. Hence this series, Art Discussion. So today's artist is a young man by the name of Nelson Makamo. Now Nelson was born in South Africa in the 80s and he graduated from printmaking in Johannesburg in 2006 and his career has been going from strength to strength since around 2008 and he's been full-time ever since then. He's had shows all over the world including the Netherlands, Italy, France, Scotland and now the UK. He was recently named South Africa's second highest selling artist which is huge. Nelson has a show on at the Gallery of African Art in Mayfair. It is called Souls of Azania. It is one not to be missed. So if you're watching this before September the 9th, 2017, please do go and check it out. You will not regret it. Information about the gallery is in the description bar below so you can get all of that to go and see the show. I went to the gallery um, to have a chat with Nelson for this interview to talk about his career and what he thinks of the art world. So have a listen to what he had to say. Enjoy. So where are you from? South Africa. South Africa? Yeah. Okay. It's born in the north, uh, uh, north part of South Africa in a province called Yimbo. My parents, my father's from Botswana. Okay. Yeah. And then you live in Joburg? Yeah. Yeah. Like full time. When did you study? When did you graduate? In 2006. Okay. And then I worked for like a model for, for like eight months. That's probably the, like, the shortest I've been employed for like. The shortest? Yeah. For like eight months. And since then I haven't been employed by anyone yeah. except myself. Yeah. Except yourself as an artist? As an artist. So, so that, when was that? You graduated 2006, so since then? Yeah, 2008, that's when I decided that um, I'm going to go in full time as an artist. It's so, good. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was, it was quite exciting because, uh, I mean, uh, one, let's bear in mind that uh, I mean, the art industry in South Africa at the time, it was like the risk, you know, because I didn't really know how, whether the market was going to be able, okay. you know, uh, the art world was going to just like take me in. It was, it was quite scary because when you ask other artists, they tell you like, nah, you'll probably need like, you know, 20 years for you to get in break through and all of that. But at the same time, it was just something that just says to me like, nah, oh, yeah, I do it. It's not, yeah. Very well done. Yeah. You just yeah. went for it. I just went for it, yes. That's good. I just went for it, yeah. At what point did you know that this is what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Yeah, the moment I decided to drop out of engineering to go on and study filmmaking for three years. You dropped out of engineering? Yeah. yeah That's what happened? That month in it, and I was like, no, this is not what I, this is not, what, this is not me, you know. And uh, then I enrolled. Uh, with, uh, there was a community college in, in Johannesburg that was just uh, specializing in, in printmaking. And what did your parents make of that? No, they're happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I guess I understand where they come from because you know they are from a generation where if you study engineer if you study you know medical but it's at least something that sort of guarantees you that uh, your nine to five type of, that you know, you're gonna guarantee your salary. And now that I think about it, there wasn't anyone that we knew within our circle or within any that was me and living as an artist. Mm -hmm. So the art industry it, it was quite interesting because it, it so far away from a lot of things that only when you start showing interest you get to understand how it works and uh, I think that's basically that and having to explain to them to say well, I'm gonna go and do this you know it was like ah, what, what are you trying to tell exactly <laughs> you know you, you're, trying to, you're gonna make a living by you know, 
You used to call them cartoons. Cartoons? <laughs> 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 Him being him, you know, um, I think it took him like say four years, and even for that, even on the fourth year, he was still having doubt. You know what I did? The only thing that I said to him was like, listen, if it doesn't work out, go back to school. Yeah. And just you know, like because obviously he's, he's someone who's very very smart, he keep on asking like, at what point I you gonna realize this thing doesn't work? You know, like it, it like you know, and. You, and I think that was also the pressure that was coming from him that also got me so inspired. You know, there's nothing as inspiring as you know, knowing that there's someone who's going to Yeah. Especially with something that you really, 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 really mm-hmm. love and passionate about. Him. So it's, it's really going to be exciting to sort of try and not really even to prove a point to him that I can do it, but to see what it will, it will take, you know, to really convince him that this is what I want to do and this is just the only thing that I feel it, it actually defined me more than anything else. Yeah. And what is it that thing now? You know, it's funny because we we went for a drive in 2013. 2013, like you pray. There's one thing that I can tell you that you really pray because I didn't really think you were going to put it out and we did it. You know, you know it, it, like it, it didn't really bother me that much. My thing was like, you know, I, I just wanted to be an artist and whatever it takes to be that, you know, um, I, and I will, I will still, I'll still do it regardless. Yeah. And, they uh, uh, look at me, so yeah, that's, that's, that's exciting when I think about it. Yeah, <laughs> and inspired. Yeah, very inspired. Yeah. yeah, very inspired, yeah. What would you say has been um, the biggest challenge that you've had to face so far in your career? And, and how did you, what steps did you take to overcome that challenge? I've been to value your work. You always value opinion from, 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 from the next person. That you create the work to you know to share that with with others, mm-hmm. but then you have connectors who take that work and look it in their house. Yeah. In my mind, say so mm-hmm. if something were to happen to me, you know, with all the works that is actually been locked up, will, will there ever be a chance where people will get to sort of experience my work freely without really having to sort of go through trouble? Because so, others feel they need to raise my own it, and, and that's that idea of someone coming in, and it's, it's actually supposed to be alone. But obviously, when there's an exchange involved in terms of currency and the goods, it always takes you back to that thing in terms of as a creative is why exactly are you are you creating work? Are you creating work for the collectors? Are you creating work to inspire others? As a creative, I think the biggest challenge is every day when you do is that you know you're asking yourself, what am I doing this for? And I think one more and one other thing as well that you 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 would probably want to know the most is that the thing you get is that you get people who say your work makes me happy, and you realize that if it doesn't make you happy, and it's locked up somewhere else, you know, doesn't actually do the same to the person who collected or the person is just actually putting it out there for the sake of status that I have sort of so in my collection was about it as well. So I think it always goes back to the question that the artworks, who do they belong to? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Who has the right to have and when we take out the value part of it as in the money part of it and people who can afford to buy it, when we sort of put that away and we were to say who exactly is there all in hard work as well. And that is probably one of the things that I don't know about others that always register in my mind. And how do you deal with that? I guess it's one thing that also brings depression within the creatives as well. Mm. You know, the moment you think about it. At the same time, there's also joy to reconnecting with your work. You know, when you it just so happen when someone tells you, oh, I have your work, you're like, well, let me see, and you realize that this is something I've done like 10 years ago. It's like you are rebonding with your child or something. And I guess I think also like maybe, maybe I'm slowly becoming conscious of that because now it's like people who are, you know, slowly starting to share all the images of my work. And I'm starting to also ask myself like all the work that I've done before, where 
exactly is it as well. You know, and I think that's exactly that. And I think also another thing that is probably one of the, the fear that I have is being able to do something that is offensive, you know, um, or oh, that will make someone feel a lesser human. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably one of the things that would all out. Like I, I probably would retire from, from my industry if I ever do work that is probably offensive as well. So you always find yourself, you know, on the other side and having to sort of try to make a decision and thinking maybe probably the decision that I make is it the right decision or is it the wrong decision at the same time. So yeah. I think it gets to a point where now you when the work is said, I always say it, it it feels good but to a certain level where like the mind doesn't really matter more sleep because you know you start asking yourself like what purpose am I actually saying? And what role is my work play, you know, mm-hmm. within any any space that I'm actually putting it as well? So eventually, it's like wow, that you you have something unique to offer. Mm-hmm. So the question is like, what are you doing about it as well? You know, are you like really um, going towards to open doors for others, or are you gonna be one of those selfish person who's gonna be arrogant about it and pretend like what you're doing, you know, you're not you're not offering something within your space. You know, and that's, that's exactly that. You can't sort of shy away from all of those things. Those things are effect. You know, it's that fact that there's someone who's looking at you and thinking, "I want to be like you." That's what. But what are you doing to make sure that you know all of this? They don't just sort of vanish and all that, and making sure that whoever is following you is actually going the right way as well, because you can't ignore it as well. So that's exactly that. So that every now and then, like I said, you always find yourself across it. It's a question of what are you doing. About yeah. yeah, yeah, and you kind of touched on it, kind of hinted at it, but mm. I just want to explore a bit. Um, institutional validation is that something that's important to you? It has made people to miss the most important work because for them, is that they can only keep your attention if you go and show them all. Mm-hmm. So, if you haven't shown them all, that means you haven't made it as well. But there's always a question of what is the role of an artist? Do I really need, how do I define success as an artist mm. as well? And it's also a monopoly as well, is that who gets to decide who gets into a collection and who doesn't? And we all know that. That is also going back to that thing that a lot of people who sit in committees, especially with me and all of that, they are of older generation in some most cases. You know, and I always say that it's Art has always been personal. You can come in and not like my work. And then you have the key for me to actually go and chill them out. But if you don't like my work, chill some might not be able to. And it always goes back to that. If the public, if there was a system where public is allowed to choose who gets into the public, who gets into collection, who doesn't, maybe we're going to have a different. What do you want to achieve as an artist? Is my achievement based on me? Showing in a museum or not? Not really. You know. And then if I'm gonna show in a museum, will I put that as a highlight of my no. I'd rather have a show where people celebrate what I do than having to be included in so and so collection. I know like it it's almost like a, a, a trophy for a lot of people. And it, it, it kinda like make other people to even say, Okay, I want I wanna collect so and so because you're in, in this in this collection. But I say it's unfair. What about someone who's not even known, but who's like he has really played an important role in my career? For me, is that as long as I can, as long as people can get access to see my work, it doesn't matter where. That will always make me happy more than me being in this collection, that collection. It, it, it does that make me less an artist because I'm not in this? Or does that like you know? It, it always goes back to that as well, mm-hmm. and and that's the thing, and also. Things have changed completely as well. In the olden days, that used to make sense because that is the only place where you know if you look at new artists, this is the place where you can go. But things have changed, you have internet now. So you, you get access to, get to see who you have, when you like, and how you want from your devices as well. So in reality, all I'm saying is that it's simple. If someone can get to have access to my work and fall in love with it on Instagram, and feel the need to follow me on it without really me being in the moment. What the hell, you know?
that's the thing. For me, I use them as people who follow what they do. Institution, you know, if I get into them, if I don't, it's still, you know, I will never actually put that as an achievement or as a highlight of my career to say, oh, I'm in this collection, or oh, I'm in now. That's not, that's not, I would rather actually highlight someone who has even spent time to comment on what I'm doing than actually for me to say, I'm in this collection and I'm actually quite a part of that collection now. If you could go back in time yeah. to 2006 when yeah. you graduated, and you knew that you wanted to be an artist, well I guess that was more 2008 when you made that decision, right? Yeah. 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 What advice would you give yourself? Travel within the continent. That would be the advice. That was the only thing that I, like, that's, there's one thing that I was missing before I can even think of. Going to America, Europe, Europe. The continent. Because the thing that you find within that is the thing that will even make you a better artist. Yeah. But that's the only thing. That's my thing. That you know, the thing is one thing. If I say I regret it, is traveling less within my continent, because I wish I can just advise each and every person who's that like this: a beauty that you can't find anywhere else in the world that will make you even a better person. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you're a doctor, or whether, if you start exploring your own spaces, there will never like there will never be anything in the world that will intimidate you. And that's one thing that I even. Even now when I go back home, I'm I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Ghana. That's that's my like it, it, it's there. Like I've even been I'm like man, the only way for me to improve in to even become a better artist is for me to know my continent. In that way it's there will never be anything else that I will I will I would feel like it would intimidate me because I know where I come from. If someone said well from Zambia and you've been there, it it, it sort of brings something into you. As well, then, and it's one of the saddest things because not many people will celebrate to go to America, but they'll never celebrate to go to an American country as well. I understand in most cases, and also another thing that also like I discovered that makes it even difficult it's difficult to travel within our own continent. Mm. It's probably one of the most difficult thing, but I would say it's so worth the risk. It's definitely worth the risk because what you get back there, there's nothing in the world. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's one thing that I would actually say, that if I were to go back and I'm going to travel within my continent, that's the end of it. Yeah. And what about somebody graduating now? Would you tell them the same thing? I would tell them the same thing. Yeah. Uh, if you want to invest in your talent, travel in your continent first. Just travel and when you come back, you will, you will have a different conversation. And I know for a fact that a lot of people who have done that, they like flip a bit with you, you know so much and by the time you get out of that place like by the time you get out of the continent you you start looking at other places completely different as well you you become probably even a better person you become a better artist as well and i can even say that if you look at probably even in history artists that that have done so well in history they've done so well simply because of one thing they have managed to travel what they have there's never been any successful artist who can say that i'm successful because of the being in one space they become successful because every time they go, when they come back, they come back with something completely different as well. Like it just enriches you, it just enriches you as well. And that's exactly that. And then, then you can you can say, now it's time for me to go and conquer the world because I've actually conquered something that is, then it will be easier for you to actually even do it outside your boundaries as well. So that's my thing. So if anyone is graduating, and I know that, like you know, most people will say financial, I'm like, nah, if you want something, you always get it. Never use money as an excuse, you know, because money comes and goes. And if you use money as, as especially as a creative, is that it shouldn't even be something that you should be on your lip, because then you will never be a better artist if you actually thinking about money all the time. You know, that's that's, uh, that's my thing. That's just how I actually view things as well. So if someone graduating, it's simple. I travel the continent. Trust me, by the time you're done with it, no one will ever touch you. The material that you're gonna have, there, will, there won't be anything, <laughs> there will never be any book in the world that will actually give you that experience. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Well, Thank you. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Thanks very much for joining me for that edition of 
art discussion with the wonderful Nelson Macamo. As I said, his show is on until the 9th of September 2017. So if you're watching this before that date, do go and check it out. It's at the Gallery of African Art in Mayfair, London. If you're watching this after that date, then I am so sorry. But do check him out anyway. He's, all of his information is in the description bar below. Please do subscribe to my channel because by subscribing you get to keep up to date with the latest interviews like this one. And also by subscribing, liking, sharing and all of that good stuff. And you're also helping to promote the artists who I'm interviewing, which to me is the most important thing. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody who has subscribed and who is continuing to support me. Until next time, take care. Bye.